Hello everyone. So first of all, um, just in case I sound weird at any point, I'm actually very sick. I have I have a cold at the moment, but I'm home and I'm bored and I need to do something. So I spent the last two days actually really enjoying myself. I've cleaned up in here. I've printed a lot of things. I had nine printers going on at the same time. I also rearranged a few things. So if you see here, so like behind me, I have I have my dehydrator spool there, which I did a video on, which is supplying um, red nylon to the Mark III and white nylon to the Pulse of the CR20, which has just printed some amazing things. Um, these are for a customer. It's just, it's absolutely perfect. It's absolutely, I love it. I love that printer. Um, I also have the Alpha YZU30 over there, which printed this thing right here, the CR10S Pro over there, which is currently printing some unreleased filamentum um, flex fill in, in lime green, gorgeous. I have the, uh, the Alpha YZ20, which printed a um, Stormtrooper Angel. There's the Moai, there's the Mark III uh, with MMU2. Now for the Mark III MMU2, I updated the firmware, both on the printer and on the MMU2. I recalibrated it and so far, it's 212 or 242 on successful prints. I remixed the bubble that Joel released um, for three color there, absolutely perfect. And also a chameleon just to test it out. Both printed perfectly, no issues whatsoever. I also printed this on, uh, on the Flash Forge Finder. And finally, I printed me a Christmas tree. This was done with the one millimeter nozzle on the Rays Pro 2 supplied by 3D Prima. Um, and it turned out beautiful. This is in uh, protopasta, freedom for all filament. But apart from telling you what I've been up to, there's a box right here, which is this thing right here. Um, this is the GTEC A20M, which is the color mix 3D printer. Yesterday, I also received the Ender 5 unexpectedly. So I'll be doing a live stream on Sunday. I don't know whether I'll upload this before or after, but either way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up, um, update the firmware, record the whole process, do a test print and let you guys know what I think. So we have a pre-assembled gantry here, two pre-assembled extruders, which look like a clone Titan extruder. Um, as far as I'm aware, this also comes with uh, run out filament sensors on on both extruders. So that's a very good thing. Some accessories, some sample filament. We have, yes, the uh, run out filament sensors here for both extruders, mouse mat. So we have the gantry in one piece with the, uh, with the hot end. This is a two in one hot end. Put this over here. So we have the two extruders. Quick assembly instructions. And we also have the base, which seems intact. We do seem to have lost one of the, um, yep. In fact, the bed is it's completely moving. Um, so yeah, it's nothing, nothing major. Nothing major, just putting it back together. Would have loved for this to be covered, but, but, I'd love, I'd love for companies to just cover these things. It's very important to cover these things. Um, obviously for obvious reasons, um, lots of electricity going through here, board is covered, but the electronics are not. Anyway, but I'm sure we can find a fix for that somehow. I'm actually quite surprised they didn't just put a plate at the bottom to cover everything. It seems like it would have been the ideal solution. But yeah. One thing to note, this is something that occurs quite often, you have the non-level bed, but all these come with eccentric nuts. Those are eccentric nuts. So tightening those one way or the other should also tighten the bed.
so now that everything is pretty much hooked up, um, all I have to do is just update the firmware. And since this is a standard Marlin-based 3D printer, um, GTEC actually have um, a, a page on GitHub where you can download the firmware. So I'm just gonna switch that on. It's gonna hook up to the computer. I'm just gonna use the standard Idu uh, Arduino IDE uh, software and just upload the new firmware. So I just took the print uh, because unfortunately there was a layer shift and I have this nagging feeling it's because it's printing a bit too fast. Um, I hope that it's not, it has nothing to do with the voltage to the uh, stepper drivers. I'm just going to slow it down um, from the feed rate here and see how that goes. So I've stopped the print again because it's layer shifting again and it's not because it's slow, I figured out what's happening and that is every time it, it rests on the purge block here it oozes out a little bit extra than it should be when it's starting to purge and it's creating kind of a blob and that is the point of entry of the nozzle when it's purging as in that's where it travels to and since there is no Z lift or Z, um, or Z hop uh, what's happening is that it's hitting that blob over there and it's constantly shifting the print or shifting the build plate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slice my own and try that one. I'm um, currently on a pause, mainly due to these. So, uh, first I had a couple of layer shifts, then I asked Philip and Frenzy for his A10M profile. Um, so I'm kind of tweaking it, so I'm trying a couple of prints, small prints, same lizard, just a little bit smaller, just to dial in the settings. The problem is that I got a, a clog, and filament started skipping. Now, this is not as easy to clear as a normal 3D printer. The reason being is that you have one nozzle, and you have two inlets. So at some point, there's like a U or a Y shaped, which kind of pushes down. So if you try to put some, some floss in there, some cleaning filament. What happens is, if there is a clog in the nozzle, it's just gonna push it up onto the other end and vice versa, so I had to take the nozzle out, I had to clean the nozzle, I had to just make sure that all the gunk has been removed. Profile should be dialed in now. It was just that clog, but I kinda wanted to tell you about it because it's important for me to just share with you the whole experience. Has this put me down? Absolutely not. I think it's, it's a very nice machine, actually. It's very solidly built. I like the compactness of it, I like the style, and I can see this working well, possibly not for a beginner. Um, I would never recommend a multi-extruder or multi-material printer for a beginner. Um, the bed does need a bit of leveling, but the good thing about the GTEC, they always come sort of prepared for a BL touch. You have the holder here and the pins ready just to insert those. So eventually I'll buy one and I'll stick it on, but for now, I'm just gonna sort this out and try to print once more. Okay, so we finally have a complete model. Um, it's very stringy. I really need to set up the um, the profile, but not tonight. It's 11 o'clock at night. Um, I, I need to go to sleep. I need to rest, I need to take some medicine. Um, first thing in the morning, I'm gonna get back to this and we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, power of editing, we'll see you in the morning. So it's day two, morning. Um, I did stay a little bit late yesterday, um, trying to fine tune the profile. 
I didn't have a lot of success. Um, I did print a bigger one, sorry for my voice, but yeah, it's, it's getting worse. Um, uh, so yeah, this was the first one that I showed yesterday. I printed another one here. I'm still struggling a bit with stringing. That's purely, purely um, uh, profile settings for the slicer. And I know this because the prints that comes pre-sliced on the, on the SD card, while I had the layer shifts because it was hitting the purge block, there was no stringing at all. So I, I know that's slicer profile tuning. So I just have to spend some more time with that. Apart from that, I always print. I also printed this. This is the pre-sliced G code with the mix on it, and I have to say that the print quality is actually really, really good. So I'm very hopeful. Even with these, the print quality is actually really nice. It's just once again the stringing, the retraction uh, when the travel moves for for it to change the filament type. So I'm very hopeful. First impressions are it's a very solid machine. I'm actually very happy that it's quite compact. Um, I, I really wish they would have included either a slicer or some information on how to preset the slicer. The pre-sliced G-codes are actually really good. Um, so I'd love to see what they've done. So what I'll probably do is sort of reverse engineer the G-code. I'll look at it on Notepad Plus. I'll see what the settings they use and try to make my own G-code from there. But all in all, I think it's actually a very good take on a uh, dual color or dual material extruder uh, type printer. Price wise, I think it's actually very affordable. I think it's in the right price bracket. Uh, it's fully open source, which is very good. Um, everything is shared online. Firmware updates are constantly uh, are constantly uploaded on GitHub. So kudos to GTEC for this. For me, that is it for now. I need to go rest and hopefully I'll have enough strength to do a live stream tomorrow before Christmas. Um, if not, it'll hopefully be the week after that. Either way, in the meantime, make sure you like, share, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, happy making guys.